This episode is brought to you by the outstanding shows of the You Run Podcast Network. From TV to true crime and everything in between, the network is your home of entertainment. So don't delay. Join in with the fun at yourunpodcast.com today. Hi, Mark. Hello. I, I like that you were adjusting your camera. Like I thought you were going to like show me like something. The camera was going down. I was like, is this the, one of those <laughs> sort of... No, I was just looking off screen and then like it just said my name and then it was like my neck. I just like, like looked like that floating head guy from Heart Attack. So I, better <laughs> give more, I better give more body to the image. More body to the image. Um, yeah. <laughs> why is pineapple a shark's favourite fruit? I do not know. Why is a pineapple a shark's favourite fruit? Because it makes semen taste better. <laughs> That's a good one. I like that. <laughs> I, I, I thought so. I, I'm back on form. And today we have something really special. <laughs> Want to die tonight? The dad jokes he tells us the scene. I hang on every word lost in the screen. The passion for fear is contagious enough. You make me believe in Mark's overblown roundups. You run podcasts for a movie review. I'm telling facts and playing games too. You watch paint pictures of darkness and dread. Wow, that Baby Shark remix was a jam, wasn't it? It's good, isn't it? I, I like it. Uh, hello, we still have that in our house. So, no, you can't start the show yet. I'm getting obsessed with this Baby Shark remix. Do, do I need you, you to send me that. There's a full remix. It's just, I've just used a tiny snippet. The entire song is oh. a dubstep remix. Do you want the whole thing? I do, yes, because we still do the Baby Shark thing in our house, even though it's very, very tiring. Um, oh. I could get down with that version, though. I found loads of versions of different songs like that. So like, things like Bluey, but like a drum and bass version of Bluey. Oh, I don't know. Bluey's a classic. You can't really change Bluey, can you? Well, <laughs> <laughs> now that's going to be in everybody's head all day now and you know it <laughs> it is going to be in mine all all episode uh, hello and welcome to the you run podcast horror movie review my name is scott my name is mark and we are a horror movie review podcast as the title would lead you to believe if you come here expecting true crime you're in the wrong place we are a show that is fully interactive you pick the shows you pick the shows you pick the episodes you pick the movies we cover you get involved in various different ways and have your say on the show none of which is happening this week i didn't put out a single single thing this week for interactive because this is an annual event today it's a very annual event. It's a special event that I'm going to talk about a little bit more in depth in a minute. But first of all, we have a competition running. Now, all you need to do to enter is go and leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts or on Spotify, screenshot it, and DM it to me at You Run Podcast on any social media network. That enters you to the draw. If you've already done that, all you need to do is comment on Spotify on an episode and that counts as an entry into the draw and if you do it this week that's one entry and if you do it next week that's another entry and our first episode back in the new year we're gonna do one of those cool spinny wheel things live and whoever wins gets to pick three pieces of merchandise from our store and you can have them completely free on us just for reviewing us or for leaving us a comment yeah it's really easy really really easy uh, you can get in touch with the show Email us, yourunpodcast at gmail.com, or send us a voicemail. And you could do that on X and Instagram by pushing down the microphone button, holding it, speaking, and letting it go. And we'll get that and make it on the show. Um, today, we're going to give you a synopsis of the movie, tell you what we liked, what we didn't like. It's going to be spoiler heavy in no particular order. Um, we do have a game today, which is going to be loads of fun. We have some facts, nice. and then we do round up and scores and call it a day. Um, so there's no voicemails this week. We have got a message. I was just getting to that. <laughs> oh, sorry. I thought because you usually transition from that segue there, I thought, oh, there's no voicemails. I've got off lightly for the Battle Royale bashing. 
Uh, do you know you didn't get a single message about Battle Royale? Not one. Because you're There's... all sat there cowering in the corner, holding onto your physical media, saying, Oh my God, he's right. I can't believe it. <laughs> I, I, I don't know if that's the truth, but. <laughs> like if that if that makes you feel better that i'll i'll it let does. you have it that. <laughs> uh, we have got a voicemail it's a bit of a long one um and it's from someone who very rarely calls the show um so here, here we go so hopefully you can hear me okay because i'm outside at work um because this is what i do at work so we're talking about getting messages and people saying things um and i started thinking about like my journey with you run podcast and and scott in particular obviously because i met mark later in the game um and it's crazy because you know we've been doing content for multiple years at this point almost three years if you can even believe that shit um and um it's weird because like when we met i didn't have any followers like i had barely any subscribers I had never done content like on another channel. I'd never been invited or asked to do content with another person. Um, and I, I want to say at that time I had just ba- like barely begun reaching out to people, um, to do content with me. And when I think about that, it's actually, it's, it's quite funny because our relationship dynamic is so uh, rough at times, like with bickering and going back and forth with each other and triggering each other and, and the like. Um, that we have this really cute, humble beginning where I had like nothing in the means of content creating. I had just started like that same year. Um, and then here you were like you, at that point you, you did have a following and and you were willing to reach out and you wanted to do content with me. And it was just a no brainer. It felt like to just that you wanted to work with me. And, and it was crazy to think that like I came on to do that movie review. And then ever since like, and look what it's blossomed into multiple series, multiple repeat visits to each other's stuff. And I, you know, I, I didn't technically start out as a listener. I started out as a follower, which if, if anyone's listening to this and you don't understand the difference, um, people who follow and reshare stuff are not as helpful as people who listen and watch the videos. <laughs> so don't be like me. I'm not like that anymore. Now I listen and stuff, but, but initially I, I didn't have a lot of time for podcasts. So I didn't listen as much until after I got to know you better. And I started to try to support you more that way. Um, but yeah, I, uh, this is long, sorry. Instagram, it's, it's both a good and a bad thing that Instagram no longer cuts you off at a minute. You can ask Tasha about that. Um, she gets about 10 minutes a day for me. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just crazy to think about like going back to that because I, I started out as a follower and then, you know, we, we, we quickly became, you know, friends I feel. And it's crazy to think about that because what are the odds that like those connections happen the way that they do? And, you know, I didn't, again, not, I didn't start out as a listener. Um, but I, I do know as someone who creates content, who became a friend, who was online with you, that you've impacted me hugely because you've always been insanely supportive of everything that I do, everything that I touch. You want me involved in things. You ask my opinion, um, because for some reason you value it, even though we never agree, I still haven't figured that out yet. Um, And I just wanted you to know that even from the other side of it as a content creator, that what you do and who you are is meaningful on that side of things too. Um, Because I do consider you a dear friend. I talk a lot, you know, we've talked about a lot of personal things. We know a lot about each other. And, um, and I'm just, I'm really excited to see what else we do together and what else we can be a part of and get an opportunity to work with one another. And um, I just thought that might be a good perspective for you to have too, is not just the listener viewer side of things, but also on the people you work with that maybe don't always, or wasn't always listening to your content. Um, and just how meaningful that was. Um, anyway, you said you were worried about this note. Uh, so I guess I can't be all note, uh, all nice and, and kind and stuff. So I'll just end with fuck you, Scott. I'm just kidding. I love you. Bye. <laughs> that was very sweet. Yeah, so that's that's Angel, Voices from the Mausoleum, member of the You Run Podcast Network. But as she said many, many moons ago, I brought her on the show as a guest. And yeah, kind of everything went from there. Um, Angel's wonderful. If you're not following her, go and follow her uh, at Voices from the Mausoleum everywhere and go, go and show her some support. She's one of the kindest, most generous people. And the reason I like her to get her input is the same reason I go to Mark and the same reason I go to Heather. Because if I go to her with something that's shit, she doesn't go, Oh, that's really good. She goes, that is trash. Why did you do that? (laughs) 
<laughs> which, which you honesty do as well and, and so does heather and honesty is what you need when you create stuff because if it's crap you need someone to tell you this is crap you need to make it better yeah yeah i'm not as brutal as angel is i'll sort of skirt around it i'm like yeah that's good man but maybe you should try doing this or maybe this would work better i don't go out and be like yeah you suck man <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, Angel does, and I love her for that. So I'll send her something. She's like, "What is that? Why did you make that? You're not going to release that, are you?" I'm like, "No, not now." <laughs> <laughs> um, remember how I said that we never get emails ever? Yes, and I almost um, said it earlier when you read out the email header. I was like, "Why are you doing this still? Nobody emails us." Well, well hell froze over. It would appear, and we received an email. Ah, okay. yeah. Is it Christmas already? I I think it must be, and it's a really nice email as well. And I'm going to read it out because it 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 really touched me. And I didn't send this to you, and I didn't do it purposely because I want to get your genuine reaction to what I'm about to read. So, hi Scott and Mark, just want to drop an email about your podcast and how important it is to me. A bit of background for you: my life has changed a lot over the last few years. Uh, as I had a job I did for over 15 years and had the pleasure of working with some amazing people I could chat to about football, music, motor racing, and my favorite subject, horror films. Now, I lost my job two years ago, and I find myself in a job today that nobody talks to each other other than work talk, and nobody is interested in horror. I also live alone, so now I spend a lot of time not really talking to anyone other than a phone call now and again and messages from friends and family. The reason I wanted to get in contact with you guys is because when I watched Late Night with the Devil, when it came out, I really wanted to hear and talk about the film. And I was going on a long car journey. So I hunted out podcasts for the movie. Most of them lasted five minutes before I turned them off. And then I found your episode on the film. You kept me company on the drive. And I instantly loved the show. Two friends just having a laugh and taking the piss out of each other and giving honest opinions about a subject we all love to hear about. I started back from the very, sorry, I started back from the first show and have listened to every episode, finished the Autopsy of Jane Doe episode, and now I've started listening to the True Crime podcast. It's so good too. And we'll now be checking out other members of the You Run Podcast Network. So just a big thank you for putting out quality content together, keeping me company while driving, housework, cooking, and making me aware of films that I might not have heard about before. Keep doing what you're doing, chaps. I look forward to brilliant horror chat and age baldness related banter in the future Ad. <laughs> oh that's cool man do you know what's really strange about that email is when we do this like i know people listen because we have like a close network within like instagram and stuff like beck and jay and jim yeah. and gareth and people reach out to us each week who are very comfortable around us who we talk to most days so I know we have a little bit of an audience, but when you get like people who we don't interact with and who we don't know, strangers, strangers in a sense, saying, oh, we listen and you're great. It's mind blowing to me that people are actually listening to us talk shit. Because when we're here and when we're doing it in this moment, it's just me and you and I'm happy with that and I'm comfortable yeah. with that. And it's just a chat between the two of us. And to think that people are actually out there digesting this and it's meaningful to them is strange to me because I just feel like I'm with a mate in a pub talking shit about a film that we watched the other day, you know? So like the fact that it's so important to so many people is a really jarring thing to, to comprehend, especially considering yeah. for me personally, all it is is just having a chin wag with you and having a back and forth about a film that we've just watched, you know? So it's, it's strange hearing emails like that. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's it's very nice and very rewarding to know that people are enjoying this. It's just, I never ever take a step back other than outside of this chair and think about it on a different level. No, and the crazy thing is you and me spoke before we come on the air about some of the success that the show is having at the moment has had recently. Like we're up, in uh, on Samsung podcasts, we're up in fourth and we're up there next to um, Empire Magazine 
podcast, which is just it's ahead mental. of us. And that is wild as fuck. This massive <laughs> publication, Empire Magazine, and we are nipping at their heels in a in a podcast chart. Blows my mind. Um, and and I'm grateful to everyone who who listens. And I, I probably don't say it enough, but it, it does mean a lot to me. And when people reach out and they they send us lovely messages like Angel did and and like Ad did in in that email, it it really means a lot to me that what I'm doing is not shouting into the void. Like I come here and I have a chat with Mark, but we're not just shouting out and no one's hearing it. The fact that people are hearing it and it's having enough of an impact that they then tell us that it's having an impact means the absolute world to me. Um, yeah. And it's great to have an impact on people's lives by discussing top tier horror movies. Like what more could you want? Yeah. And I can imagine for you personally as well, it must have more of an impact to get that reward from people, that gratification, because I come in here, I, I dedicate what two hours, three hours, maybe tops a week, plus the actual viewing of the film at like 90 minutes. So this takes me like four hours of my life, which isn't a lot when you spread that out over seven days. But for you, man, you like finish, you go and edit, you then work on the content for next week. And all I have to do is watch a film and come and talk shit about it. But the hours and the effort you put in is insane. Like if it wasn't for you, this this wouldn't be a thing. Like this wouldn't be a podcast. I mean, obviously it would be for you. You'd still be doing it. But I mean, this show sure, wouldn't be a thing certainly because i just wouldn't have the time or the energy or the patience to just do it, it, it insomnia is my friend that's all i'm going to say <laughs> on that uh, anyway talking of top tier horror movies we're going to kick off with no one watches this shit november and we're kicking off with a bang so for this entire month we are very much channeling podcast network member the dewey pod monster who cover movies like this every single week we're going to do it for a month we're picking all the b movies all the weird and wonderful movies well we're not you're picking them all today is a very special movie something that holds a special place in our heart and it's something we've been covering for four years we started way back in the beginning with the very original sharknado and we're now all the way up to sharknado 5 global swarming um a new Sharknado threat arises across the globe and Finn, April and the returning Nova must work as a team with a whole list of Z-list cameos. Like where they found these people, I don't know. I, I don't know. <laughs> uh, and bring an end to the global threat of killer storms. Uh, copyright law is out the window as they parody everything in an attempt to save Gil from the country hop hopping portal containing Sharknado. Maybe the sisterhood of Sharknado could help. Do, do you know what? The, the, I don't know why I'm trying to give a synopsis. The fucking writers no. of this movie did not have a synopsis for this film. Um, <laughs> like, like they genuinely did it. Um, oh let, man, this is let's, fuck. let's get into it. Where do you want to start? Do you want to start with the Indiana Jones moment, or do you want to start later or earlier than that in this? I don't even know. It, this to be great... honest with you, I can't even give you an actual descriptive run through of this movie if I wanted to, because it's so all over the place. I just do not even know where to start. And I think that's my issue with this. I'm not going to give you my overall thoughts in general, because I don't want to bummer the episode out too early on. But there is no cohesive through line in this movie. <laughs> no. Like, at least the with the is... other ones, we have an A to B. We know where we're going and we know what we've got to do. We've got a mission. This is fucking mental, man. Yeah, I, uh, there's some crap at the beginning, which is all completely unimportant. I want to start at the Indiana Jones moment. So yeah. Nova's found, uh, under Stonehenge, Nova has found a cave, and she's found scrawlings on the wall that there have been sharknadoes for thousands of years, and the druids knew how to stop them. So she. At Stonehenge. Way, where we're at. <laughs> yeah. Um, so she demands that Finn Shepard comes to help her. Uh, his abseiling down was amazing. <laughs> yeah. Very cool. Uh, I mean, and then don't get me wrong, Finn's cool. I still I'm still team Finn, even throughout this movie. I'm still on board with him. 
especially it, at the end with his Grim Reaper shit that he had going on. But we'll get to that <laughs> later. <laughs> See, when he dived down, he does the whole like Mission Impossible thing, and then he stops himself like an inch from the floor, and then he hits us with the line, Tom Cruise, eat your heart out. I was like, yes, yes, <laughs> let's do that. <laughs> and they do heavily throughout this. They are uh, so close to the wire. Yeah, I, they go into the cave system because they're looking for an artifact to control the Sharknadoes. Do you want to talk us through Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, Sharknado style? <laughs> I mean, to be honest with you, I actually really, really like this bit. It was a, the thing that got the biggest laugh out of me the most was when they found the Indiana Jones hat. And I thought, no, Finn, don't, don't put it on because that's just cliche and cheesy. And he actually turned and was like, nah, that's not my style. And Nova yeah. puts it on. But he was like, but I will take this. And he takes a whip. I was like, yes, that's going to come in later. I'm going to be really cool when he uses it. It wasn't, but it was a cool setup at the beginning. Yeah, it was a really cool setup. And then where they, they go through like the booby traps and it's it's so Temple of Doom and they get through to the <laughs> artifacts sat on a table and Finn's got like a bag of weighted stones and he does the swap. I was like, oh, yeah. man, how are you not being sued like right now? <laughs> I mean, it's like on the verge of scary movie level stuff at this point. And I'm going to be honest with you in my personal opinion, I think, they jumped the shark with this one a little bit. Like before <laughs> in previous movies, they were still they were still in their lane and they were still their own thing. And they, they got egregious with the cameos and stuff like that. But they were still their own movie. They still had their own purpose and their own plot point. In here, it's it's bad man in terms of like the literal rip-offs of scenes from movies that we know and love. It's scary movie level stuff. And it became quite annoying quite quickly for me. Yeah, see, I, I enjoyed this one, but we'll, we'll talk about how I felt about it in roundups. Um, the actual Sharknadoes are as shit as ever. They've yes, made I no attempt. <laughs> yeah, like no attempt to improve the CGI at all. This is still no. done on some guy's laptop in a basement for like $11. Yeah, I don't want to be the guy who's just bashing this movie. We love the Sharknado franchise. It's our thing. But I think this might be the end, my friend. You know, like, no. it's, it's we... rough. It's rough. Like, the thing that I always used to highlight how much I love the cheesy CGI kills throughout the movie was, like, the shark was always CGI. That was always shit. And I love the fact that they kept it like that from the first right through to the fourth. But they always used practical effects to show the aftermath of the scene or the actual execution of the kill itself, even though it was a CGI shark doing it. But on here, we don't yeah. actually have any kills. There's no kills in this movie. All we have is Sharknado spinning and one of them falls out of the Sharknado and hits somebody into a wall and that's it. They're dead. We don't like in the other movies, we had really cool action set pieces where people died and it was like a big moment in the movie. It's just, so bloated by cameos and stuff. It's like, oh, well, we can't do that. So we'll just have to knock them against a wall and have them die. And it's just that all the way through. Even Finn doesn't even have a full-on cool one-on-one -on -one with a shark. That's a lie. He does surf a shark down Buckingham Palace's stairs while punching it on the nose, which was kind of <laughs> Yes, <cool>. he does. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he does. Uh, and the budget for this is obviously a lot bigger because they filmed a lot of stuff on location in a lot of countries. You say that, though, but did you catch that all the London stuff, it clearly wasn't Buckingham Palace. It was just a big, expensive house in America. And then they yeah. tried to showcase like an, a, like a British like street, like a, an English sidewalk, but it had American traffic light systems and yeah. <laughs> zebra crossings and that. I was like, this is clearly just some upper Manhattan street and you're trying to pass it off as British. <laughs> yeah, see I, I see, I liked the different locations. It had a very, like, Fast and Furious 10 or 11 or whatever it is where they go to Brazil and they go to Italy. Like, I, I liked that and I liked all the different, countries and i liked there was lots of things in here they done as nods to other movies that were done subtly like the eiffel tower not the eiffel tower leaning tower of pisa being pushed up straight by the sharknado is a nod to superman 
when Superman goes bad and he straightens the Leaning Tower of Pisa. So is that there's as things nasty in here. Superman gets. That, that's as nasty like, as he oh, gets. Take this, take this to your historic monument. <laughs> I'll make it straight. Um, <laughs> But yeah, there's a lot in here not to like. Uh, the sisters of Sharknado, like what the fuck are they about? Yeah, I, I, yeah, no, I don't get that. I didn't get it at all. And I and, and I know you quite quite like the whole location jump thing, but for me, it just I didn't I didn't like it. I didn't. It was too grand. The whole thing was too big on a sip. This is a simplistic movie. It's a Sharknado. They've got to fight it and they've got to contain it. It was just zipping and zooming from place to place and it just lost my interest so quickly. Do you know who I feel sorry yeah. for the most in this movie? Is Gil. The actor who played Gil. He's like, right, we're doing Sharknado <laughs> 5. You've got to come back and do this movie. And he just spent 90 minutes zipping around on a fucking circle string while they filmed him and then CGI'd a tornado around him. I was like, the poor little <laughs> bastard has got the dizziest, dizziest tights he's ever had in his life, and he's about 13 years old. Well, let's talk about when they go to... So when they're in London and the Sharknado hits, Gil and April get taken to Q's lab from Bond. That's exactly where yes. they go. Let's talk about the helmet that they put on, the, the Sharknado-protecting helmet... Which is I'm a telling you, no, I could go to Halfords right now and buy the same fucking helmet with a shark fin. <laughs> I've seen kids at skate parks wearing the exact same thing. Uh, so when he, when they gave it to him, he's like, it protects you from shark naders. If you get sucked in, it's, it's going to protect you. I was expecting some over the top, stupidly grand CGI <laughs> thing where it kind of like came around him and like put him in a little cocoon. Like Spy when Kids it, level CGI cool costume thing. Yeah. But it didn't. It was just a skate helmet with a fin on it. And when he gets sucked into the tornado, the sharks leave him alone. The lightning doesn't affect him. And somehow he can now travel through the magical portal in the Sharknado to other countries at will. But does he, though? Because he never comes out of the tornado. He's literally been in this for a week, just spinning <laughs> around, just Tra fucking feeling like full on absolute seasickness in this thing. Poor little guy, man. Uh, and the I thing did... is, as well, like it made me laugh so much. The relationship between Finn and April. There's so many moments in this where they just stop and have like smooches and be like, <laughs> "You're the love of my life." And I'm like, "How are you so distracted by the fact that your 14 year old child is spinning around in a tornado and you're declaring your love for one another?" I'm like, "Get a grip, guys." Uh, one thing they done in this that I really appreciated. So April was rebuilt in three or four i can't remember the whichever one that gary boosie was in she was rebuilt as a robot and she could fly and shit like iron man i love the fact that yeah. they retconned that in this they obviously realized april flying was a bad idea so she, she gets fly in this she does and then she gets destroyed and it's just like the top half of her body and her legs are all in bits and he carries her on a on his back like c-3po from star wars and then when yes. she's put back together by Olivia Newton-John, yes, you oh. heard me correctly, Olivia Newton-John. Oh, puts man, the together. grease lines that they used in this five-minute <laughs> segment. I died inside so much. It, you know was what I mean? it, was, it was bad, man. It was the shittiest thing I've ever seen in my life. I was like, Olivia Newton-John, you are an absolute hero and a goddess. Why, why have you done this? Why have you degraded yourself so much? Like, you are better than the Sharknado franchise. Uh, do you know, I kind of really appreciate when a bigger star touches this. Like, I really liked it when Jerry Springer was in three because he's a, a globally recognisable star, as is Olivia Newton-John. So when she does a cameo in this, that instantly makes me go, do you know what? Good for you. Fair play. Why not? But then when you've got characters like... Because the woman who's with her is her daughter in real life as well. So that is mum and daughter. Is it really? Yeah. Oh, wow. That's incredible. Olivia Newton-John, I know you sadly passed away, but you should really control your funding for your children because she has just plasticized her face. She she looks like she can't even crack a smile because you have injected that much shit into her. Does she actually have a career herself or is she just literally I, living off mummy? I, I have. 
have no idea. This is the first time I've seen her in anything, and I only knew it was her because when I went and looked at facts, that was one of the facts that came up. Uh, I mean, that's a fun thing for them to do for a weekend. It's like, oh, we're going to go be part of Sharknado 5, Mother Daughter Day Out. That's cool. But, yeah. Uh, the the, gre- the Grease Lightning sort of, like, quotes and stuff that they were using. I can't <laughs> I got chills. My head remember them. Yeah. <laughs> I, I got uh, chills and then the daughter goes, they're multiplying. I was like, no, I, no. Yeah, no. yeah. It was stuff like that, man. I was like that hiding under my shirt. Like, oh, no, don't. No, oh, <laughs> please make it stop. <laughs> uh, it, the thing is, though, it's things like that that is what draws me to this franchise. It's stupid stuff like that that makes me laugh. Like, there's a bit in here with uh, Jordan or Katie Price, however you want to know her, um, where she's with the prime minister and the prime minister gets his leg bitten off by a shark. He then goes on a like marathon run, losing blood. But her death, the shark comes in. And as the shark comes in, she puts her hands in the air and goes, oh, no, it's a shark. And it crushes <laughs> her to the floor. And I guarantee, because I've seen enough of Katie Price to know, I guarantee when she walked off that set, she's like, I'm going to be huge in Hollywood. And that makes me laugh. That yeah, makes that me smile. Hilarious. Yeah, yeah. there was a few like that. There was like some guys from like TOWIE or Made in Chelsea or The Only Way is Essex. I don't know. I know the faces. I don't know the personality. And clearly they don't have any of them anywhere. But there is a lot of them in here. Like Louis Spence. And do you know what the thing is? I think that what pissed me off a little bit more than anything else is how British or English-centric the cultural cameos were in this. Like, I like when it's like all like Hugh uh, Hugh Hefner. Not Hugh Hefner. Yeah, Hugh Hefner. I think has he made an appearance yet? Surely he's been in one of these by now. I'm not sure. I can't remember. You've got like the cheesy American ones that you can laugh at. Because it's funny, because you're like, ha ha, I'm British, and I laugh at your mocking little B-listers. But when it's our own B-listers, I'm like, oh, you're actually embarrassing me now. Like, why are people <laughs> watching this? Because this is really, really shaming all of us. Um, Jedward, Jedward are back again. Nobeds, what the fuck are they doing here for the like <laughs> 17th time? Why have they not been killed by a shark yet? And they're like, they're trying to act real cool in Amsterdam with like a bong and shit. I'm like, you guys are losers. Like, really, really poor poor human beings and i don't like either of you the passion for jedward is strong i do apologize it Um, really (laughs) is like that that, the hatred for jedward is is real (laughs) but my favorite was the uh brett michaels is it i think the uh oh how have my mind gone blind is it poison or something like that the league gets wiped up by the bus and he's like rocking out i'm like oh this is fucking brilliant because he's american and i find it hilarious that we're mocking americans but when it's British people, I don't know why I get ultimately offended by the fact that these shameful people that we put on a pedestal are being glorified throughout this movie. Maybe that's how American feel when they're watching Sharknado as like three and four it, and stuff. Maybe, maybe, maybe you've hit the nail on the head. That's why the American audience look at these and go, "Ah, oh, for fuck's sake!" And this is one of the higher ranked ones because the big American audience watched this and went, ha, 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 "Look at those twats in England." <laughs> Exactly that. <laughs> exactly that. Oh, how the turns table, man. Fucking hell. What an idiot. <laughs> uh, um, I did not like the cameo of the Pope. Uh, oh, yeah. It was that, that guy who was on like the shampoo adverts and shit. I don't actually know if he does shampoo adverts or if it's just a meme. Yeah, I don't know either, but it's that guy. And the whole gifting him the holy chainsaw i was like oh this is and it dreadful. wasn't even cool it wasn't even in like the shape of a cross or anything like that no like we've had so we've had laser we had a, we had a lightsaber chainsaw in sharknado yes, 3 awesome. we had a ginormous like attached to a forklift truck chainsaw in sharknado 4 and in this, we get uh, honestly, it looks like something you'd prune a hedge with, but it's black and gold with like a little cross, like engraved on the handle. I was like, oh, yeah, it looked like something you find in an S and M dungeon. It was weird and very yeah. unsatisfying. Uh, and um, I think, and again, I think that's my overall feelings towards this movie. It was just unsatisfying. One thing I do want to ask you though: the guy who plays the prime minister at the beginning, yeah, couldn't put the nail. Who is that dude? 
No idea. A really small, annoying little dude. Like I think he was really big in like eighties movies and played like Igor or something like that. Yeah. See, I, I recognised him. I didn't care for his character, so I didn't bother to go and look who he was. Heather, Heather will know the answer to this. I guarantee you now, Heather will know who this guy is. Heather, if you are listening, I do not expect you to watch this movie because it's dog shit. But Google who plays a prime minister in Sharknado 5 because I'm sure he's American. He's not British yeah. by any stretch. No. He's an American dude. Um, he's a little annoying fella. A bit like the guy who does like the news broadcast, you know, when they go to Africa and he's talking yeah, about yeah. like zebras and stuff. He's as, he's annoying as that guy. Um, yeah. I'd look at uh, that. Yeah, and and Heather, just so you you heard from Angel earlier, but I'll confirm it. You can do more than a minute long message on Instagram now, so you don't need to send multiple. You can do one long one. This is true. So next time you feel like giving us a cheer, give us a hey, give us a yay. Don't yeah. to drop it by. <laughs> <laughs> this week has been awesome. How have we even not talked about it yet? <laughs> <laughs> uh, do, do you know, I, I deliberately do. I shared it on my story today because we just released the true crime episode. Uh, so go to uh, at Wednesday Wine and Horror on Instagram. And if you go and have a look at her post, there is a picture that Heather, Heather shared of when she was a cheerleader. Um, and yes. that it led to a long, very funny conversation in the group chat where Heather reached a point where she's like, fuck, I hate the Perry. You leave me alone. I found it. I found it on her personal Facebook page, immediately screen grabbed it and shared it with the group. And it it led to one of the best days of my life. I'm not going to lie to you. I, I thoroughly enjoyed the back and forth we had. <laughs> I wish I could yeah. share the entire conversation with you all because I was like a giddy schoolgirl. Um, Heather the Vampire Slayer is real. And it, it was it was truly magical to witness. Maybe, maybe that's why she likes Twilight so much. <laughs> It's, Maybe it's so. she's putting out a hit list. <laughs> yeah. Um, back to back to the wonders of Sharknado 5. Um, the scientists, and like we've spoken about this on every time we've done it. The science of Sharknados doesn't necessarily work, but you can wrap your head around the way they explain it. Yes. The science in this movie was so bad that they added mythical runes and effectively magic to make it make yeah. sense Which and was i stupid yeah i i and the the prop like the shark thing that they had was awful <laughs> it looked like the kind of thing you used to get free in a box of cereal back in the 90s yeah it was really that that was really bad um, i do like the dynamic between nova and april I love the hatred there. Like it made me laugh because Nova's the one who's like accidentally let go of Finn and he slipped up into the shark NATO. And Tara Reed's act is like, you let my son go into the shark NATO. And Nova's like, you've always hated me. And she's like, no, you let my shark, you let my son go into a shark NATO. Let my shark, my shark. <laughs> <laughs> my shark go to son NATO. It was, it was bad. It was really bad. It was like an EastEnders moment. It was like, boom, boom. Bum, 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 bum. Um, yeah, the chemistry between the two of them was annoying. I know you're a fanboy, but I didn't like it. I didn't particularly like April, but I haven't liked her in any of the previous movies. I think Tara Reid sucks asshole. She's yeah. terrible. And they did they did that thing, do you know, where she dies and like Olivia Newton John puts her back together. And they're like, oh, make me less robotic. I have to feel like that line was written because of our acting capabilities. It was like, <laughs> yeah, please try and make me better actress in these movies. <laughs> uh, what did you think of the conclusion of this movie? Because I was like, ah, oh, fuck off. The conclusion was great. I loved it. And that surprised to me because I, I'd spent so much of the runtime of this movie being like, ah, oh, this is going to end anytime soon. And then we got his, the king himself, Mr. Ivan Drago, pops up as Finn Shepard's son from the future or back from the future. I yeah. always get confused which way around it works. Has he come back from the future or is he from the future yeah, going back he's, to the past? He's from the future way. going back to the past. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, he's, he's not trying he's, to get to the future. It's back to the no. past in this case. So the, the shark maiders have devastated the entire world. And for some unbeknown reason, Finn is the only survivor on the entire planet 
Which is brilliant, and I love how he gets like that hooded cloak, and he's walking around like the Grim Reaper with April's head in a bag. And, like <laughs> that was brilliant. But I also blew my mind that in the space of three hours, he managed to walk from Africa to the North Pole, which was also brilliant. They kept like walking past monuments across the globe, and I'm like, "You haven't shaved." <laughs> you li- this has literally been 20 minutes. How have you managed to progress this far on your journey without transport? Um, I-, I like the ending. I do, because it also tees up the potential of what the sequel could be. Like, And is this the final one? Is this it? Are we done the next yeah, time? The next time is the last time. It's actually called Sharknado, the last one. Right, which is great because there's a lot of things I didn't like in here. I didn't like that they killed Nova. That pissed me off because she's such a yeah. vital part to it. Um, they killed pretty much everybody. They killed they his killed, son, the older one. Yeah. Um, and they, they killed everyone apart from Finn and April. Gil. Yeah, but yeah, well, everyone's dead. Everyone's dead. But yeah. like they set up the potential now with the whole time travel element to bring back the Hoff and people from like the first few movies that got killed off and also like cameos of cool people that got killed off that can now be reintroduced again into the sequel of the final one. And they can have like a big final hoo-ha of yes, this is why this was great. But whoever wrote this movie should not allow to be involved in wrapping things up. No. uh, And I agree. I I think we're kind of done on Sharknado, which I thought it would be longer than that, but there's really not much to this movie. Should we take a break? Sure thing. Let's do it. Okay. When you finish this episode, why not head over to yourunpodcast.com and check out some other shows for some additional horror content. Podcast in the Woods is a great destination. Hosted by Gabby and Boomer, this horror movie review show boasts regular guests and honest opinions. Highly entertaining and at times hilariously funny, Podcast in the Woods is top-tier horror content. Or why not check in for some super nostalgic moments with Pop Culture Reflections Podcast. This show is hosted by Justin and covers everything that has influenced pop culture in every decade. Films, music, TV shows and professional wrestling all make regular appearances along with fabulous guests. This show is a must-listen. These and many other incredible shows all available at yourunpodcast.com. Your home of awesome entertainment. Do you like Gladys has had a bit of an upgrade? She's got a little bit more personality to her. I'm, I'm working a lot with Gladys to make her better. Nah, fuck Gladys, bitch. <laughs> but I do like podcasts from the woods is artwork. I really like that. It's very goosebump I hope every yeah. time it comes up when we do like the 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 shout out stuff segment I always see it and I'm like I really like that that's really cool yeah really really cool uh, both of those are really cool shows as well uh, you run podcast.com go and check those shows out all the other shows as well there's so many good shows on there um, and a bit of a spoiler in January the you run podcast network is about to expand massively we're about to welcome many more new shows to the you run podcast network so there's lots coming, network-wise. More workload for yourself. Well done. <laughs> yes, yes, more, more work for me. Uh, let's do some facts. So I don't know if you spotted this, and I didn't. And then when I found the fact, I had to go back and watch it. So when Finn and Nova are looking through the caves in Stonehenge, there are props from Halloween 3, Season of the Witch. The skull mask and the silver shamrock novelty badge logo are sat on one of the rocks. Ah, wow, that's cool. I'm not going back to watch it to find out, but I'll take your word for it. Really, really cool. Uh, So (laughs) the Australian news anchors in this. So when it attacked, oh, we forgot about the Sydney Harbour where the Sydney Harbour house turns. That that was cool. (laughs) That was very, very cool. And Tony Hawk has to skate up it. (laughs) How did we miss that? Tony How did Hawk. we miss that? Tony Hawk is fucking awesome in this movie. And he yeah. didn't die either, which is cool. No. Well, yeah, I mean, he we, did we missed... technically by the end, but he didn't die yeah. on screen by a shark. Yeah, we missed out a major plot there. Anyway, uh, the Australian news anchors hit you with a line that says, you better run, you better, you better take cover, which is from the chorus of Down Under by Men at Work. Oh, Men at Work. Massive trajectory here. Men at Work, the singer from Men at Work, Colin Hare, he is incredible. 
if anybody has ever watched Scrubs, this is what got me into Colin Hay. There's a song in, I think it's season two, where like JD's out in the, the lobby and Colin Hay's playing the guitar. I can't get to sleep. I think about the implications. And then he dies, yeah. and then the whole episode is in the morgue and he carries on singing that song. That's Colin Hay. He's the lead singer of Men at Work. I don't know where I'm going with this, but everybody needs to go and listen to Colin Hay's solo stuff because he's an incredible singer songwriter. <laughs> And Men at Work are also great. Um, this is the only movie which made me sad, and I spotted it, and it, I was like, oh. And I waited all the way to the end of the credits. It does not say Finn when it's finished. Is this the only movie that does that? It's the only one that doesn't do it. Every other movie But it does, end... because to be fair, this one says to be continued. So yeah, this is technically but... like that whole double bill trilogy thing so i'll kind of yeah. let it off this is a two-parter they've set it up as a double bill uh, to round off the end uh, olivia newton john character warns april and finn not to get physical which was obviously one that of was the line that, that that was a line that threw me i think that was the one <laughs> uh, so the secretary general is played by uh nichelle nichols who is a thura in star trek um, and she says that Finn has gone where no man has gone before, mirroring the line from Star Trek to go where man has never gone before. Um, I get it, man. I'm not a Trekkie. No, I'm not a Trekkie either. I'm a Star Wars fan. Uh, the opening title. I have a cool life. <laughs> to, you're a Myers fan. Don't be throwing shade at Star Wars. Um, <laughs> the opening title card does not appear until you're 21 minutes into the film yeah but i think it was longer on the first one um the last one was it four where we had the whole pirate ship thing at the beginning yeah yeah, yeah. that was a good like 30 40 minutes before we got the title card in that one yeah it was um a shark nado sister so these are the the team of people who work under nova to track and stop shark nados she at one point says, engage the Paxton initiative, which is a homage to Bill Paxton from when he worked in when he was in the movie Twister. Oh, that's cool. I didn't. How did I not pick up on that? That's cool. Uh, yeah. Uh, and the last. Uh, no, I've got two more. Um, no, this is the last one. I lie. Um, Nova sits down <laughs> at a computer. Um, and when she sits down at a computer, she's warned. Don't touch anything that's labeled Cyberdyne which preempts yes. comes at the end where we're then going to go into time travel. So if they've, they've mentioned Cyberdyne, which is from Terminator. That's Terminator reference, is it? Yeah, yeah. If I don't get a Terminator in the last Sharknado, I'm going to be fuming. Well, we haven't seen dinosaurs yet, and I know we get dinosaurs in one of these movies, so I'm assuming that's when we get, like, the mecha suits that they have. I see, like, yeah, a still I, I, image of, like, Finn fighting a T-Rex and shit. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think that's the next one. Uh, and that's it for facts. So it's been a long time since we've played a game. Um, we've mentioned it recently and listeners have mentioned it as well. So I decided now would be a really good time to unveil something that I've been working on for literally a week. If this is just like, broken thought, spirit with a different title, I'm going to be really pissed off. You know that? But I, I get that. It's been a while, let's play a game. Something new to make Mark insane. Hear him rage, hear him scream. For the rest of us, it is a dream. Put this now into point oh. Make it tears so of people flow. No lifelines, no one helps. These questions will make you yelp. Broken spirit. Two point oh. These questions will make you yelp. Broken spirit, Broken spirit. Yeah. That just goes to show how fucking well I know you, because I had no idea you actually had that planned or lined up, and I could just smell <laughs> something was off tonight. It is the return. Well, not the return. The upgraded version of Broken Spirit oh, that God, has gone through some perfect. changes. 
<laughs> no, it's gone through some changes. So it is the same quiz that you all know and love and that Mark broke. He broke Broken Spirit and it went away. So Broken Spirit went and had a thought and worked out how to come back bigger and better and badder than before. So it's the same as before. There are 10 questions. Uh, there's no help on these questions. The changes. So it is now a themed quiz. Every time we do this, it is themed around one particular thing. It is not general knowledge of all of horror. It's a very niche bit of knowledge about one particular <laughs> part of the horror genre. Also, if you take too long, you will start hearing a sound, which is this. The instant anxiety I just felt from hearing that nostalgic song. <laughs> Desperately trying to get a bubble. Uh, and if you get one wrong, you will hear another really nostalgic sound that you will know probably better than anyone else in the world. You died. Uh, and if you get one correct, you will get this. Oh, that was a bit underwhelming. Do you think you could have done better with the ding? I, I probably could have done, but I didn't. <laughs> um, so this episode of Broken Spirit 2.0 is themed around the Sharknado franchise movies one through five. They so just so with... we're clear, you telling me this is a new Broken Spirit. But all you've done is just added some sound bites. It's still the same fucking quiz as before. Just... You've just added the Resident Evil, the Sonic theme, and some lazy ass, cheap ass bell that you found on Google. And it's themed to one particular thing now. So it's 2.0. Um, <laughs> they, they start really easy and they get incre incredibly, incredibly hard. Um, so, Mark, question number one. What is the name of the main protagonist in the Sharknado franchise? It is Thin Shepherd. Correct. Question number two. What is Finn Shepherd's weapon of choice? It is a chainsaw. Are these all That's Sharknado correct. related? They are. It's all Sharknado. Oh, fuck. <laughs> uh, so question number three. In Sharknado 5... What movie franchise is spoofed when they retrieve the artifact? Indiana Jones. Do I need to give the, the, the no, film? No, that's, oh, that's okay. correct. I think it's Indiana Temple Jones. of Doom, but I wouldn't be 100% on that. It is Temple of Doom, but yeah, just the franchise is all you needed. Uh, question number four. What is the name of the popular American wrestler who appears in Sharknado 3 and the Terrifier franchise? Oh, oh, because I'm current, I'm, I'm a dad now, so I'm like having to watch movies in segments. I'm, I'm halfway through Terrifier 3 and he's in that. But I'm not a big wrestler. Can I have two You're guesses? Because not... I think it's Brett Michaels or Brett Hart and I don't know which one it is of the two. Okay, I might well, be wrong it's completely it, above. It, it, it... It's neither of those. I'll give you a clue. His last name is Jericho. Oh, it's Chris Jericho. I kind of gifted Thank you that. You, you kind of gifted me that. I'm not a wrestler, man. I knew it was one of the two. Three. Uh, that you question, number, <laughs> uh, question number five. In Sharknado 4, what actor plays April's dad? Oh. <gasps> We mentioned it earlier in this episode as well. Um, April's dad. Is a oh, oh oh Gary Brucey. That is correct. You, you you do well. You're halfway through. Uh, this is where they start to get a little bit harder. Question number six: What year was the original Sharknado movie released? Oh man, I I have no idea. I am I am terrible with dates. Um, so we've got five. Can you tell me when five came out? <laughs> that's not cheating, technically. No, that that's not cheating. I don't know, but I will I will quickly Google for you. Uh, da -da -da -da. Sharknado five come out in two thousand and seventeen. 
Sharknado 4 come out. No, let's go. I'm not going to give you that one. Sharknado 3 came out in 2015. Sharknado 2 came out in 2014. Ooh, all right, that's for a spanner in the works because I would be like, so they're coming out every year. But those two came out in synchronization. Oh, no, because you missed one. So technically, they're coming yeah. out yearly. So. Uh, 2012. Ah, oh, fuck off, man. 2013, wasn't it? It was 2013. So, ah. unfortunately, you didn't break Broken Spirit 2.0 on your first attempt. But it will come back. It will make periodic appearances. And guests that come on the show will also get to face Broken Spirit 2.0. That's brilliant. Because if somebody comes on to watch something like Halloween and they're like, oh, I've never seen a Halloween movie before. I'm like... Well, you better watch all 13 because you're playing Broken Spirit. <laughs> no, 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 no. It, it may not necessarily be themed to what we're doing that week. Ah. Oh, I, I, I could be I could be I could be a real arsehole. Like we could do a Halloween movie, you could do Broken Spirit, and I could theme it on Nightmare on Elm Street. Why are you such an arsehole? Why be that guy? <laughs> I, I don't know. I just think I, I get some enjoyment out of it. I, I don't have much enjoyment. You do, don't you? You do. Yeah, <laughs> I, I really do. Uh, would, would you like to, to round this up first or would you like me to, to go first? No, I'll, I'll go first this time because I'm pretty pissed off with this movie. So I'll... Everybody shut up! I have an erection! <laughs> <laughs> um... Yeah, Sharknado 5 for me was very, very underwhelming. I, I, you know me, I'm a big fanboy of this franchise. I champion it to the end of the earth. I think what they did with 2, 3, and 4 is just genius on a ridiculously idiotic level. Um, but part 5 literally jumped the shark for me. I don't think they quite grasped what this franchise had become in terms of what was cemented before it with the previous movies. I didn't like Sharknado 1, by the way, but I liked 2, 3, and 4. I thought they were brilliant. Shark, Sharknado 4 was a pinnacle for me. What they did with that movie in terms of the constant changing of the Sharknado with the elements, picking up the rocks and then the fire and the, all that kind of stuff was really cool because it was a progression throughout. Everything kept elevating itself to different levels talking about this like it's fucking shakespeare it's a shark yeah but, but like this one had sharkzilla again something else we didn't cover when they got to tokyo all the sharks got attacked got attacked with nuclear waste and become a giant sharkzilla it shark ridiculous. it looked shit it looked shit it was ridiculous and it it didn't have like that would have been cool if that was the concept if there was like oh yeah it's a sharkzilla because it's japan Tokyo, blah, blah, blah. and then they'd taken it somewhere else and then it taken on a different form depending on the location so we go to egypt and it was like a sand nado they went to sweden and it was a snow nado you know and we started incorporating the location elements to the ta to the shark nado that would have been enjoyable for me and i would have got on board with the themes of the location but they didn't do that it was the same shark nado which had no character I'm going to talk about it as if it's a person. It had no character depending on where it was going from. Um, but whereas the previous ones did, it was it was evolving, it was growing. It was just the same basic Sharknado, but it just had blue lightning in the middle of it that had some weird time portal in it that made people move from location to location, which was ridiculous. I didn't enjoy the whole mythical element introduced to it which sounds such a ludicrous thing to say because it's a fucking yeah. Sharknado. Do you know what I mean? But it, 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 honestly, it, it, it's, it's arguably the most ridiculous thing you've ever said on the show. It is, and I'm hearing myself out loud saying it. I'm like, dude, what are you talking about? It's a Sharknado movie. But it just didn't work for me. I didn't like that side of it. I didn't like the incorporation of the mythical element. It's not a grounded franchise by any means, but no. at least I could digest the plausibility of something so ridiculous up until this point, to me, it just felt so far away from anything that I would 
consider normality. And I know shark nets in general are not normality, but what they've done here is just taken it to a point of such stupidity that I didn't enjoy it. I couldn't get on board with it. I I felt like all the characters had become so self-absorbed within the personalities that they'd set up in previous movies that they weren't even trying. They were just tropes of themselves and it was annoying to watch, especially Finn. Like, I love Finn. I love Finn as a character throughout this movie. He's always been great. But in the previous movie, it's always seems like he's tried. He's always tried to, like, he knows where he is. He knows what movie he's in. He knows what he's doing. But at least he gives the effort as if to say, look, if I get the casting call, at least I can showcase a little bit of what I'm about. So they know that if I do get the chance to step away from something so stupid, I can probably break that mold if I need to. Here he's just fully swallows it. He just swallows it and he chews the fat throughout. And it's annoying. Um, the kills in this are pathetic. There is nothing that stands out where you're like, oh, that kill was cool. Or, oh, yeah, did you see the way that that ridiculously overplayed cameo that we just seen went out yet? Yeah, no, it, we don't get any of that. Like, even when you're annoyed by cameos in previous movies, the result of their death usually makes you be like, that was stupid, but did you see her get her head bit off? That was cool. Yeah. Here, it's just constant CGI shark just bumping into people, and that's it. And then just like a blood splatter. There's no actual execution via the sharks. Like, for example, the previous movies, Finn dives headfirst into a shark with a chainsaw, cuts himself free from it in all its bloody, gory, practical effects levels. We don't get anything like that here. It's just no. ridiculous CGI heavy stuff all the way through. Um, it was just disappointing, man. It was disappointing. It was underwhelming. And I know this; these movies can be better because I've seen it and I've seen it. And by the fifth one, you would think that there would be projecting to a more elevated level and being like yeah right okay we've done it they they didn't they went back <laughs> for me they just went you you can't say that look at that halloween franchise what happens when you get to four and five fucking massive downturn <laughs> that's not fair <laughs> uh, we'll briefly move on from your comments um i i don't know i don't know i was just so hyped by this movie going in that when it actually came to fruition i was just so disappointed the trailer for it showcases the ho the overall arc of the movie in a much better light than what it plays out on screen. Um, I'm excited for the final movie because of what the setup was at the end. And I feel like they can wreck on all of this bullshit that they tried to set up in this first movie, which would entertain me a great deal more. Um, but as a whole, I just, yeah, this this for me is the worst one. I think I would prefer to watch the first Sharknado no. over, over the, this one. I do. I genuinely think I would rather watch Sharknado 1 than Sharknado 5. This is the worst one by far for me. And it's, it's breaking my heart, man. It's breaking my heart genuinely to have to say this. But it is bad and I don't like it. And I wouldn't recommend anybody watched it. And you know me, I champion these movies. I'm like, yes, Sharknado is the best thing since sliced bread, but it's not. This is this is bad. It's really, really, really bad. I haven't been able to sleep since watching it. It's, it's ruined my life. <laughs> well, what score do you give this? Uh, this is a one out of five. It's pure dog shit. Don't watch it. Wow. Okay. Um, this movie slaps. It's dumb in its most primal <laughs> form. Um, I'm pleased they toned up everything. So I'm pleased. I liked the fact that all of these characters have almost become caricatures of themselves. I love the fact that they've lent into all of the tropes. Like That's the bit I really enjoyed. I love the fact that Nova is just a badass bitch. And she's now got a team of badass bitches. That is her entire character now. Finn is just a hero he is just a hero he's nothing more now he's not a, a dad he's not a husband he's just a hero and i kind of bought into that the cameos in this are atrocious to the point that i needed to go and google who i was sat watching it with my phone on going who played this character in shark 05 
I did the same thing. Out. Who played the queen in Sharknado 4? You would think that was a prime <laughs> example for him to do something cool. Who played the queen? Nobody. Some woman from Spain who had shitload of plastic surgery and looked like the most ridiculous character I'd ever seen on screen. Yeah, see, I, I done a lot of that. Um, the acting, especially from the cameos, is arguably the worst in the entire franchise. But again, I found myself enjoying it because I was laughing at it. So like Sharknado 3, I enjoyed because I was kind of laughing with it. They fully captured what they were doing. And I was along for the ride. Sharknado 4, I wasn't as on board on. This one, I was on board, but for a completely different reason. Because it is fucking dreadful. And because it's so bad, for me, it hit that transition where it beca- it's so bad. It hasn't become good, but it's become something that I can sit and poke fun at. Like Tony Hawk skating down the Sydney, Sydney Opera House. Like, yeah. why? What? Why? At what point did they go... We need to get the hawk on it. And that translates as Tony Hawk getting his skateboard out, jumping out of the top of the Sydney Opera House and skating down. Like all of that, like, there is no plot. There's no storyline to this. I hated the actual Sharknadoes themselves. They felt like a bit character in this as opposed to the focus of the movie. Um, yeah. I, I know that this is going into time travel. I, I wasn't overly keen on the setup. I think I'd rather it had done like an Evil Dead 2 moment. I'd rather that they'd all been sucked into a Sharknado and spat out in prehistoric time or spat out in medieval England. I think that's how I would have liked it to end. Um, I don't like the fact they destroyed the whole world, like everything dead. Um, I I enjoyed it. It's crap, and I don't recommend anyone goes and sits and watches this because i don't think you'll get the same level of enjoyment out of it that i did but for me this is this is a three and a half out of five it sits the third favorite sharknado for me so it's sharknado three sharknado four this sharknado two sharknado one. Oh, that's worrying man mine let's do mine mine is four three two one five yeah, so five's higher up for me. Hey, well, we can all like different things. Like I say, I like it. Like I, I'm not by any way saying this is a good movie, and I'm not saying I like it for the quality of the movie. I like this because I haven't laughed this much for a long time. I literally sat on my sofa, and there was moments where I had to pause it because I was laughing one at the movie, and two at Lisa, who was sat on the sofa next to me, eye rolling and repeating the phrase, what the fuck is this? I think that's maybe what I should have done. I should have maybe made my wife watch this with me so I could have had that whole justification angle with her and be like, no, 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 it's good because of this. No, 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 honestly, you're missing the point of this because of this. And it's like That maybe would have warranted my, my stay with the movie. But yeah, it's just, do you know what pissed me off the most? is I saved this movie. Obviously, we're now Monday after Halloween. I knew we had this coming up, and I was like, you know what? I'm going to save that. I'm going to, be, I'm going to make that my Halloween movie night. So the trick-or-treaters are all gone. The kids are in bed. I'm going to sit down on the sofa. I'm going to eat all my daughter's trick-or-treating candy. And I'm going <laughs> to live my best life and watch Sharknado 5. This is going to be the best Halloween ever. Fucking wasn't, man fucking wasn't i could have picked any other movie to enjoy halloween with and i didn't i watched i watched sharknado 5 and it was the biggest regret of my life i should have watched this on monday or tuesday in the week uh see i i didn't watch this on halloween but i i thoroughly enjoyed my time with it i think the the crowning bit that i laughed the most at was something that happened at home not actually in the movie so lisa got up and went and got like a drink and something to eat and when she came back she went what did i miss i went I thought you didn't like it. She went, I don't. It's terrible, but I have to know what's going on now because I'm so confused. <laughs> Again, that's all I was all the way through this movie was just confused and dumbfounded by it. <laughs> yeah, and I think that's kind of what it is. Like You go into Sharknado 5 global swarming, you don't expect to get Silence of the Lambs quality storytelling. You, you yeah. kind, It kind of is what it is. Um, that's it for another 
week. Uh, make sure you like us. Make sure you comment on Spotify to enter our draw. Make sure you share our show. Make sure you do all the wonderful things that helps us because we give you a free show every single week. Um, if you want to spend a bit of cash, head over to our to our shop. Go and buy a, a Mark T-shirt, oozing daddy vibes, or a um, Colonel Cockring T-shirt that, that Mark will see landing on his doorstep very, very soon. Uh, I don't believe you. You've been saying that to me for six months now. You're full of shit. I, I know. I've dragged it out long enough now. I, I am going to send you one. Um, <laughs> that's about it. Um, do you want to talk about next week? Because we know what we're doing. Yeah, yeah. We, why not? Why not? I'm excited. I haven't seen either of the movies we've got already polled for Bad November. Um, yeah, so, so we've got all three polled now. Um, oh, so we, we know but... what the final one is. Yeah, the, the final one is a short person in a in a place that oh, you shouldn't yeah, be. Okay. Yeah, I have um, been following the polls. I just didn't know the final result. But yeah, that's cool. Yeah, yeah that, that is cool. But next week, we're going to be talking about Frankenhooker. Yes. Now, first I've never watch seen this movie. Yes, <sighs> first watch for me. First watch for me. And I'm excited. I'm very, very excited for this movie. I know it's well loved. I see like cosplay of this all the time. And I've seen yeah. a lot of them, like for love of horror and stuff, coming as Frank and Hooker and stuff. So I'm excited for it. I feel like this is going to be more my wheelhouse in terms of of the comedic sort of tone. I I hope so because you've been a real downer this week. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to be. I didn't want to be. I wanted to be the guy as I have been in all the other Sharknado run throughs. So I'm like Scott. Come on, man. This was awesome. You know, it feels it feels strange for me to be sat on the other side. Yeah, it's bizarre. Anyway, thank you very much for listening, and we will catch you all next week. See you all later. Cheers, guys. See you next week. You want to die tonight? Overblown roundups. You run podcasts for a movie review. On Billy Fox and playing games too. Your words paint pictures of darkness and dread, leaving me grinning long after I fled. You run podcasts for a movie review. Unveiling facts and playing games too. 